Hello everyone, welcome back to Cambridge A-Level Biology with Dr. Demi. I'm Dr. Demi, for those who do not know. Um, you're the, I'm the only voice you hear on this channel, so I really need to change how I introduce myself. But I am going to do a paper four question on chapter 19, just to help you guys see how um, the questions look like and what you can expect um, for your 2022 paper. So please, um, I'm just going to get straight into it and I hope that you enjoy it. It's going to be a short video because it's only um, one question really. Okay, so let's look at this. It says the polymerase chain reaction, which is the PCR, is used to produce large quantities of DNA from a very small original sample. The main steps of one PCR method are shown in figure 4.1. So step one, you heat the DNA mixture, tag polymerase, um, you attack polymerase primers and nucleotides, and you also apply a temperature of 95 degrees. And then you have step two, which is cooling the mixture to 65 degrees and then you have step three which is um incubate at 72 degrees so in this case something i'll just say to bear in mind before you even start reading is to first of all think of um, the different steps of pcr and i think those steps um hopefully i get them correctly sometimes um i tend to forget even though i know what the steps entail um, but you do have a denaturation step you have an annealing step and you also have what is called an elongation step Okay, so that's what um, each of these steps are. And there's, those are the temperatures at which they occur. And this would be helpful for you. I mean, making notes like this on your question paper before you even read the question is always a good thing. In case you start reading the question and things escape your mind, this is a good way for you to be able to recall information with ease. So here it says, explain why it is necessary to heat the mixture to 95 degrees. So, I mean, I've already written here that the first step is denaturation and you already have here 95 degrees. So what does denaturation um, entail? It means you separate the DNA um, helix. So separate DNA. Okay. Um, and also like you separate the DNA and the reason obviously is why. So when they say explain why, they are asking you for and not just to describe the process, um, but to rather explain why that part of the process is necessary. So separate the DNA so that um, the bases are exposed, so that bases are exposed. Um, so that bases are exposed um, and template strands. And you can also say and template strands. Um, are available for copying okay i wouldn't say copying i would rather say are available for replication because that's the biological term to use not that if you say copying um it's a, it's technically wrong but to just you know to stay on the good side of whatever is marking your paper try to use the biology terms as much often as possible something else i want you to put uh, to pay attention to here is the number of points that is associated with this question so you haven't been told specifically to state a certain number of points but you can see that the question carries two points so you do have to make sure that there are at least two facts in your answer and you also have to make sure that those two facts do not contradict each other this is obviously very very important um, when you're writing your answers henceforth because markers have been told that they have to read your entire answer before they award you any marks and so that means that if you're writing writing your answer and you are unsure of something and you start to put in contradictory information, that contradictory information might count against you. So by all means, make sure that your answers are well um, written. And then it says here, explain why primers are included in the mixture. If you've watched the video on DNA replication, oh, this is very straightforward. You know that the primers um, always attach to the DNA and they allow for the attachment of the polymerase okay so um, you can say that primers attached to dna um, to dna template strand i would say um, i'm not going to write everything in detail so that we don't waste too much time so primers attached to i'll just write here attached to dna template strand um, and allow polymerase to bind okay so they allow for the polymerase to bind. And in this case, obviously, the polymerase is, you can call it a DNA polymerase because they haven't um, specified here, 
but you can say tac polymerase as well because that's the one that they are using so always remember that the pcr process is basically a dna replication process the moment you think of it that way the easier it is it's just it's a shorter dna replication process there isn't any helicase involved there are no ligase and all of those things rather you simply have the dna tac polymerase primers and the nucleotides and you have different temperatures at which the three different steps are cool. all right and the last question is just right here on the left. Explain why the DNA, um, why the enzyme TAC polymerase, rather than any other type of DNA polymerase, is used in PCR. So again, you have two marks here, and something you need to know for a fact is that TAC polymerase was isolated from a thermophilus bacterium, so it is heat stable or it is able to work at very high temperature, and that means that um, the temperature that's required for PCR to occur which is 95, 65, and 72, um, the temperatures rather, which are 95, 65, and 72, do not lead to the TAC polymerase being deactivated or um, being inefficient or inactive. So that's something else that you need to also bear in mind. Also, when you use TAC polymerase, something else that is good about it is that you don't have to like keep replacing the polymerase after each cycle because again it doesn't denature or become um, inactivated due to the high temperatures so that's something that would give you two marks there right then let's look at the next one which is um, question b the presence of a faulty allele of the gene BRCA2 can lead to an increased chance of developing breast cancer there are many different faulty alleles of the gene BRCA2. People who are considered to be at risk of breast cancer may choose to be tested for the presence of these alleles in their genomes. A microarray can be used to test blood samples for the presence of these alleles. The microarray contains DNA probes for faulty for different faulty alleles of the BRCA2 gene. Two, um, of the BRCA2 gene rather. And then it starts by saying stick the meaning of the term genome. So the genome is very simply all of the genetic material um, in a cell. So all the genetic material. So if we had to say this in French, I don't know how to say genetic material in French, but if you're a French speaking student, um, just to let you know that I was recently certified as an intermediate one speaker. So I can tell you two low I don't know how genetic would be said, but I'm guessing genetic, okay? And whatever material is that. So all the genetic material in a cell is basically the, um, what's it called now? The genome. You can also um, specify by saying it's all the genetic material within the nucleus and within the mitochondria, because remember that the mitochondria also has its own DNA separately, which is something you learn about um, um, when you do, I think, chapter 18 or thereabouts, or chapter 17, where we discuss mitochondrial Eve. So that's all you have to know about the term genome. Then the second question says, um, suggest which type of cell from a blood sample is suitable for testing for the presence of these faulty alleles. So if an allele is faulty, that means it's going to be expressing a faulty protein, right, or a protein that is not folded properly. And if a protein is not folded properly, it means that it will be seen by the body as a foreign agent. Um, and in that case, if there's a foreign agent within the body, what cells respond to a foreign agent? Now think about this question and think of the fact that it's not a direct question, but rather a question that requires you to think deeply about the things that you already know about the human body and cells and all of that. So that is what would help you answer this question. So in this case, the type of cell that you'd be looking for that responds to a foreign agent or a foreign appearing agent within the, the body um, would be a white blood cell. Or you can also say it's a, new, a leukocyte. Um, and if you haven't watched the videos on immunity, please by all means do so. Um, do so. And why would you take a white blood cell? The reason why a white blood cell is a good um, sample for this is that the white blood cell has a nucleus itself, so it also contains DNA, um, and so you'd be able to see like if there's a if there's an issue with the DNA, you'd also be able to see it within the white blood cell, like it would be expressed even within the white blood cell as the cell is trying to attack whatever other cell. Um, so that's a good cell that you can use. Um, I guess some other cells you can test for these particular faulty alleles. 
that uh, might not have been mentioned might be like you can also take cells from the breast itself um, just to see if there are any cells that are maybe dividing differently and what are those cell, what kind of genes those cells are expressing so i would say maybe a white blood cell or a breast um, cell um, would give you some of these ideas Okay, let's look at this question. It says, outline how faulty alleles of the BRCA2 gene can be detected using the microarray. So I know microarrays are very frustrating for a lot of students, and I have a video on microarrays, so please, by all means, make sure you watch that video. But I'll try to explain as much as possible here. So a microarray is like a tiny um, tray. And on this tray, there are many wells. So these are wells. They are not holes that you can pour things through and they come out at the other end. They're like wells that are very tiny. And in these wells, you can put probes. So let's say you want to detect faulty genes of a BRCA2 gene. What you can do in this case is that you take the probes that are complementary to the faulty gene. So let's assume that the normal gene for BRCA2 is CCG, CAA, um, TAC. So let's just assume that's the normal BRCA2 gene. And the faulty gene, I'm going to use a different color here, I'll use blue, is maybe G, no, I'm not going to write G, I'll use a different one. Maybe the faulty gene here in this case is A, C, G, um, C, A, T, and T, A, C. So obviously you can see here that there are some substitutions that have happened right so this is the faulty gene so you will have probes that are complementary to this faulty gene and obviously the probe complementary to this faulty gene would be t g c g t a um a t g these are the probes that would be complementary, right? So you take these probes and you put them into the wells of the DNA. You also take, you can also take like the normal cells, but in this case, because we're not comparing, we won't look at the normal cells at all. We simply want to detect the faulty genes. So we take the um, probe that is complementary and we put all those probes in these holes here. And then now we take our faulty BRCA2 gene and we label it with a fluorescent tag. So our fluorescent tag color might be red, right? So we label it with a fluorescent tag, which is red. And then we put that into like a mixture and we pour it over the microarray tray. What will happen is that wherever this probe exists, um, this um, complementary probe exists, the BRCA2 faulty gene will hybridize with that probe because they are complementary to each other. And what you will see then there is that this would become that part of the microarray will come out as red because of the red fluorescence that you've put on it. So if you want to put this into words, it is very easy. You simply just say um, um, use probes that are complementary, use complementary probes or probes that are complementary to the um, faulty allele probes that are complementary to the faulty allele. I'll just write that as use probes. Um, and then you can also say um, obtain single strand of DNA, single stranded DNA of um, the faulty gene. So single strand DNA of the faulty gene. And over here, because it says outline, in this case, you can actually just write your points like this, or you can use numbers like one, two, three, four, and also note that there are only four points. So you can just write only four things. You don't have to write the entire microarray process. Something else to point out here is that please don't write beyond the space that has been provided. That space has been provided for a reason. Um, don't use this part of the question paper to make notes and then draw a big arrow and then try to write your answer elsewhere. Rather make your notes on these blank spaces here with pencil and write in pen when you answer the question. So obtain single stranded DNA and then you can also write label um, single stranded DNA. So that's this with fluorescent tags. Please don't use arrows like I am doing now. Um, so fluorescent tags. Um, and then hybridize um, DNA with probes. Hybridize with probes. And then you can also use UV light to check where... Um, <laughs> this is so bad, like in terms of my writing. Use UV light to check where the 
DNA um, and the probes have hybridized with each other. So, I mean, this is already more than four points and you totally get full marks for that. Um, so yeah, just putting that out there. All right, let's see what the next question says. Um, it says here, outline the advantages of screening for the faulty alleles of the BRCA2 gene. So obviously one of the advantages is that people might want to make um, choices about whether or not they want to have uh, preventive treatment. So I don't know if it was a story about Angelina Jolie back in the day where she discovered that she had the BRCA2 gene and as a result of that decided to have her breasts removed so that she would reduce her chances of getting cancer. So if it's not present, it means obviously that the person is not at risk um, of being worried. Um, also, it helps people determine whether or not they should have children. And of course, this seems like an unfair question because these are not exactly biology questions. But always remember that with CIE, your biology learning is not limited to just giving textbook responses, but also apply applying whatever it is that you're learning to the greater society so do you want to have children who might develop cancer um, at some point um, that might be something that you also don't want to think about so there's so many advantages you can think of here this is more of a common sense question um so yeah very easy to answer and this brings me to the end of my video very short very straightforward and i hope that you have enjoyed it until the next video have a good time